Sunday stream today. I'm kind of uh, I'm on a little theme here about relearning music and and uh, going back to my childhood um, and kind of reevaluating my approach to teaching. My approach to te teaching has been the same uh, when I wrote my Beato book when I was uh, teaching college back in the 80s, I thought a lot about it, about what are the basic elements that you need to learn for music and what are the most common things that I would write out for people. And since I had students from the beginners to advanced, I needed to encompass pretty much everything. But I also had another side of it, which is how do you teach people how to listen to music and how to learn things by ear? Because there are two different things. We talked about this last week, but I want to really expound on it now and show you, uh, demonstrate about learning things by ear even more. Um, and we're, we're going to take, um, we're going to start with a song from the, from the, uh, sixties. Um, and, um, but that has some different kind of chords, to it, but, but it's a very common song. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Um, I'm gonna continue on with my Beato book, uh, or my Beato bundle sale of 89 bucks um, for this week through the weekend. It's, um, it's my ear training course, my music theory course, and then my two guitar courses beyond that. Now, uh, all this stuff is gonna be in there, but I'm gonna, um, talk about kind of how to use these things and in using practical uh, ways to learn songs. Okay. Like how do you learn a song right now as we're, as we're um, that, that doesn't have straight major and minor chords, right? Let's just assume that you can figure out GCD or, you know, a few chords, but then you get into some things where it's like, I don't know the name of that chord. I don't know how I'm going to figure out that chord. It's kind of like with uh, when my dad, gave me this Joe Pass album. It was like, if you learn to, to play guitar like this, you've accomplished something with your life. It's like, learn to play guitar like this. I don't know any of these chords that he's playing. And I'm sitting there and figuring out, it's like, what is that one? I hear this note, I hear this note, I hear this note, I hear that note. What is that? I don't know what that chord is, but that sounds definitely like it's the chord that Joe Pass is playing. And then I'm like, Dah! and I knew that it was the same chord shape moved up because I'm using logic, like I talked about last week, it's like like hearing the same shapes, recognizing them. When I say shapes, I mean, in this case, this is a physical chord shape that, you know, it's the same shape. This is F minor seven, this is B flat minor seven, same chord shape. Um, and so I used my ear and my, uh, and the visual things that you can, can to learn, uh, to learn songs, right? There's visual components of learning the guitar. I'm gonna demonstrate some stuff on the piano here too uh, and how to how to use that. I didn't have a piano when um, when I started learning how to play music. I did not, we didn't own a piano until I went to college. My parents got a piano uh, when we were, my freshman year of college. My brother, John, the youngest of seven, he's the only one that learned how to play the piano. I learned how to play in the practice rooms at Ithaca College pretty much. Um, so uh, I'm going to play a song here. This is a beautiful Burt Bacharach, Hal David song that a lot of you are going to know, know. This is Dusty Springfield. This is The Look of Love. Check it out. The look of love is in your eyes. The look your heart can disguise. Okay, so this is like, um, this is a, a version of this song. It's really like a bossa nova. Now, some of these chords, you're like, well, those don't sound like regular major and minor chords. And then between the piano and the guitar, there's some di a few dissonances and stuff, right? So it's like, uh, like what is that first chord even, right? The look. Boom. Well, I can hear that note there, and it sounds kind of like a minor chord, but it's not quite a minor chord. It could be, you could say, it's C sharp minor seven. It's really, 
I hear that 11 in there, that note. But I don't know that chord form, right? These are one of the things that I would have learned is I would have started by learning some songs like this and starting how to understand how to put these chord progressions together, like what kind of chord progressions go together. This is what my Beato book teaches you. It's like, what are the chords in the key, right? What is a key? Because I'd basically start out by saying, here's a circle of fifths. Here are the notes that are in every key. Once you know that, then you can start to say, okay, here's how keys go together. And these are logical um, chord groupings, okay? And then, but some songs, like this song, changes keys or moves outside of, outside of this key. So let's just talk about this. So, so it starts out. Um, the look of love is in hear this? I hear that note, but I hear bah. Now, how do I know that note? Because I know what that note is. I can hear it's a minor chord. I can hear that it's a it's a minor chord, but it's got that bah note on the top that's that's doesn't belong with that chord necessarily. That's a that's the minor nine. So it's a, like it's like a G sharp minor nine. So you got this C sharp minor eleven. I'm gonna write this down here. Let me go to my whiteboard here. This is a lot better, I think, for learning is to actually talk about this. So you start out here. This first chord here is um, C sharp minor 11, right? Fancy, fancy. The look, and one, one, two, three, four. So it's two bars. You have to learn how to count this stuff. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then. So this is G sharp minor nine. Whoops. Get back to my pen. I don't know why it moved here. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Then I go like this here. And I go um, G sharp minor nine for two bars. This little thing is called a virgule, this little mark here. That just means repeat the chord from the bar before. So we're learning some music here, right? And then the next chord goes here. Listen. Okay, this is kind of a tricky chord here. I hear this. But I hear this, I hear this sharp 11 chord in here. Um, I just dropped my, uh, my, my white pen. Hold on, let me get it. Oh boy. Okay, so this sharp 11 chord, let me go back to this view here. Now these, these are really kind of piano voicings that you have to know on guitar. It's like, you can play it like this. Okay, so that is A, we'll call this A major seven with a sharp 11. And then we'll continue on, listen. In disguise. Okay, then it goes to this. Sharp uh, seven, sus four to G sharp seven. So G sharp seven, sus four to G sharp seven. You know the the piano and the guitar kind of change at different times, probably because they were just reading it on the spot. And then um, and then the next section. <laughs> Then, oh, okay, so it's got some different things here. So it goes back to this C sharp minor 11. And then it goes to A major 7. Da, 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 A minor 6. Now, if you know this chord here, I'm going to go back to this view here. We're learning stuff here. Um, do, 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 do. 
beautiful. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. That's the next part coming up. Listen. You have to really. Just words can So some of these chords are moving kind of fast, right? So we have the uh, the look of love in your eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we go to E major 7. So it's E major 7 for one bar, two beats, then E7. You hear this. Now, what are these chords when it goes to there? Let's go back to our, our view here, our iPad, because this stuff is really beautiful. Okay, so it goes, um, let me think here. It goes to E major seven here. That's hard for me to write on this. E major seven to E seven to um, um, E major seven to E seven, then, um, a major seven for two bars. And then let's just see if I can see all that. Okay, I can. I just start right there. I'm trying to look to make sure that I'm in the screen because I know I, that I'm in I'm in half the screen right here of the uh of the, the thing here. Then it goes to uh um oh I guess I could do that too. It goes uh E major seven, um oh whoops, hold on. goes G sharp seven so it's four to G sharp seven to C sharp minor I played C sharp minor 11 to F sharp nine that's all in one bar whoops I'm leaning over on my stool here then it goes um, E major seven. Oh, da, 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 da. Oh, okay, that's that's it then. So then it goes to uh B11, or it's really like A over B, A major over B, put that in parentheses, um, for two bars, and then um, E major 7, then B11 uh, for two bars, right? I call it B11. It's very hard to write on this thing. I'm going to take it off here and go back to this view. Okay, so... I'm going to play along with it. Let me play along from the beginning here so you can kind of see. And I want to talk about kind of where these chords come from, how all this stuff works together, right? The look of love is in your eyes. The look your heart can disguise. Love it. 
Okay, so how do these chords even go together? Where are these things from, right? So if we talk about some basic uh, music theory, like where, where do these particular chords originate from? Let me, let's go back to this here, to the iPad view. Let me erase this off of here and, and, and talk about kind of how these keys work together, right? So this is, uh, this starts out the C sharp minor 11 chord. Like what, what is that even? Like, how does that, how does that relate? Let me, let me make this bigger here. So I can uh, erase easier here. There we go. Object eraser. There we go. There we go. Okay, so like what what does that even mean? What is a C sharp minor eleven, right? Well, I kind of started talking about this last week a little bit. If you take a basic C sharp minor chord. Um, um, let's talk about this. C sharp minor equals the note C sharp, E, G sharp. This is the one. Uh, C sharp to E is the uh, flat third and the fifth. We talked about this last week. This is C sharp minor, okay? Uh, somebody asked what's in the bundle I thought I saw in here, like what's in my Beato bundle that's on sale this week. Um, this, this is this, um, it basically starts out with basic music theory, like what chords are in what keys, right? It takes it from that, just like with my ear training course. So both of these things teach you not only what uh, what is in each key, but like, how do you recognize the sound of it? Okay, so this is a C sharp minor triad. Triad is three notes, tri, okay? If you have a note like the 11th added to it, that means uh, the 11th and the fourth are the same notes. So anytime you ever these ter terms, like the ninth, um, the ninth, 11th, or 13, these are called upper extensions. Nine equals the second scale degree, the 11 equals the fourth scale degree. And the 13th equals the 6th scale degree. What do, what do I mean? Let's say you take a minor scale. I'll do it in C minor so that people, so it's easier for people to relate to this. C minor. C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat. Okay, this is a C minor scale, right? Just C natural minor. If I number the notes, 1, 2, there's the flat 3, 4, 5, uh, flat 6, flat 7. Okay. Uh, so the the a C minor chord would be these three notes one flat three five right minor chords are one flat three five so what are these notes like the eleven the eleven would be this note the fourth remember the fourth and the eleven are the same note the second and the ninth are the same note nine is the second and this flat six well that's really like the flat thirteen uh, the the uh, the six and the 13 are the same thing, or the flat six and the flat 13 are the same thing. The same notes. Uh, it has to do with, with the octave that, that, the, that the note is in. But if let's, we, we'll, take, we'll make it even simpler here. We'll just make it C, a C major scale, okay? This is, this is really make it a lot easier to understand these things, okay? Take a C major scale. Like I said, all this stuff is in my book. You can get my whole, all four of my courses for 89 bucks. And it teaches you not only the theory behind this, like how all these things belong together so you can learn songs by ear and understand the theory behind them. Um, but it's also, uh, is it teaches you how to hear them, right? And then instantly relate to what the notes are. Okay, so let's say we take a C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. I'm going to start the scale again. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Okay, so here's the first half of the C major scales. Here's the notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? That's the octave. Then you got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, 14. Okay, so these are the important notes here. If I go to here, if I go this note, the 13, 
in the in the top part of it. We don't talk about we talk about tenths, I guess, but these are the upper extensions here. Okay, so if you have a C major chord, C E G, this is C major, and I add the ninth to it. The ninth is D, so C major add nine. Uh, you just add the note D to it. Okay. Uh, so that would be like this, C, D, E, G. That's a C, add nine. This is how theory works, okay? Um, if I have a, uh, a C, sus, four, those are the notes C, F, G. One, four, five. The third, the E, is replaced by the F. That's why it's called a sus, four, suspended four. Sus, four, C, sus, four. Okay, um, so these are how chords are described. So the C sharp minor 11 has a, the note that's 11 scale degrees or four scale degrees above the, the root of the chord. And you just add these things to the chords and you, and you can get these certain chord shapes. But really the key is, can you actually hear what these things are, right? So if I have a minor chord here, let me go back to this thing. I play this C sharp minor chord. Bum, bum, bum. Those are the th those are the notes I'm hearing this chord. Bum, 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 bum. When I play that and I hear those notes, bum, bum, bum. Root to the fifth to the root, root fifth third root. So this flat third here. The E, one, three, five, three, one. It's really one flat three, five, flat three, one, one, five, flat three, one, 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 five, flat three, one. So anytime that I'm playing that stuff, these things, I know exactly what notes of the chords are being played in here. So when I hear this, bum, 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 and I'm like, that note's not in this chord, bum. Oh, that's that note, that 11, but it's going to be up here. Bah! Right? So this is the, um, uh, being able to hear that interval of a fourth or the 11th and then instantly knowing, like I hear that, I'm like, okay, I hear that note, bah! I'm hearing like C sharp minor, but I hear the note, bah! I say, well, that's a minor 11 note. Um, and instantly I know what the chord shape is because I'm, I'm, I'm taking this from hearing it. Uh, when I play, when I hit play on the music, I hear that and I've learned to recognize what these things are, what these chords are. When I heard that this night, this, that note, da, I was not, da, I hear ba, that. That minor nine, or the or the uh, um, the the ninth on the minor seventh chord there, the uh, so that would be a G sharp minor nine uh, uh, minor G sharp minor nine chord, right? Because it's a G sharp minor seven chord with an added ninth on the top, and um, and that has a certain sound to it. That's the thing. This is the thing I try to get through to people. I saw this 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 really interesting thing on Instagram today. So some guy was playing chords for Paul McCartney. I don't know when this happened. And the guy's going like, so, so McCartney's turned away and the guy goes, what chord is this, Paul? And Paul says C major, like instantly. Why does he know it's C major? Because Paul McCartney has a great ear. Then the guy goes like, he goes A minor. Then he plays, I forget what he played, E minor. Then he played the, then he played something else. And then he plays this. And Paul, and Paul was like, Paul joked around, he turned his head over. And, and uh, he, he, that's one of those expensive chords, right? But Paul recognizes these chords instantly. And he knows what they are. Why? Because he has this dictionary of recognized sounds because he's played a million of these things. He's played a million songs. He figured out a million songs. And, and, uh, does Paul have perfect pitch? No, he doesn't need to have perfect pitch. He has he has this recognition of these chord shapes that he just recognizes on the guitar. When I hear this minor 11 
chord there, I instantly know it's a minor 11 chord. I just recognize that collection of notes as a minor 11. And this is what um, is really important with ear training. This is kind of one of the things that I was one of my goals about about my ear training course when when um, when I developed it. It's not just developing how to hear intervals and hear melodies and learn them. It's also recognizing chord patterns, chord progressions. If it's one four five one one six four five one six four five one. Uh, two, five, one, six, whatever it is. And then you start recognizing the bass motions of these things and you recognize if it's, um, uh, if these chords happen in their uh, normal pattern, okay? So in a major key, the chords are major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. They always happen like that. The one chord's always major, the four chord's always major, the five chord's always major. Two, three, and six are minor, and the seventh chord is diminished. You're like, what does the seventh chord mean? It means a chord built on the seventh note of the scale. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in the key of C, this is C major. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. That note has a diminished chord built on it. This third, first scale degree has a major chord. C major, the second chord is D minor. The third scale degree is E minor, the fourth scale degree, F major, the fifth scale degree, G major, and then A minor, and then B diminished, and then, sorry about my buzz. I gotta get that fixed. So those are the what we call the diatonic chords in the key of C. Now, if anything is is changed out of that, like if I have a chord progression, I always use this one. That's one major three, four minor four to one. Now, when I say when I emphasize those chords, that major three, normally in the key of C, it's one to three, four, five, one. But if you change that second chord, one major three to major four to minor four, that major three and minor four are not in the key of C. Those are borrowed from a different key. Now, these are the things I go over in my theory course, okay? So my theory video course, just to explain this, my Beato book Interactive is a video theory course that teaches you music theory, starting with what notes are in what keys, like the circle of fifths, shows you how to build triads, then seventh chords, uh, and how they work in keys. And then it teaches you um, chord progressions, right? And uh, then eventually you get to things like these borrowed chords, like they're chords that are not in the key, but are in closely related keys and commonly used. Like that major three is very common. We, when I do my pop song countdowns, you always, this is like the most common thing to, in, in pop songs today is this major three. Um, it's, um, it's one of the few chords in popular music now that is that is used. Back in the day, you know, when the Beatles were here, I did the, you know, when I play these Beatles songs, I should, they use a million chords in their songs, right? Or The Look of Love, because these are pro songwriters, Hal David and, and Burt Bacharach, they've got all these jazz chords in them, which is, it has this, um, um, it is, it has this to be um, to give more melodic interest. Now, Dean asked an interesting thing here. He says, doesn't the extensions, the 9th, 11th, 13th, have to have the 7th to be considered upper extensions? Yes. But, Dean, most people say, you can say C add 2, but most people don't. They say C add 9. A C add 9 to most people then. If you say C major nine, then most people are gonna play this chord with the seventh in it, okay? As opposed to this. That's a C add nine. This is C major nine, so that's got the seventh in it, okay?
okay? Now on the piano, you can play, or, so I can put the, uh, I can put the ninth right next to the third. You could say, oh, well, that's a C major add two. Eh, nobody calls it that. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, technically a C major add nine would be, because that, that's nine notes, that, that note, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine notes away from the root. That's basically how this works, right? When you say it's the 11, if I add an 11 to the C major chord, I'd put this note, duh, that's 11 notes away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Or 13. This note, but it's going to be up here, it's 13 notes away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen 10, 11, 12, 13 notes away. Or you can say it's just six notes away in the first octave. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or the ninth is one, two, right? Instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Same note. So that's a C add nine. On the guitar, these chords are, are more difficult to play, so they tend to come, the, the add nines, the nines tend to be put, actually put nine notes away because you can't play those close intervals or it's not easy to play those close intervals on the guitars. So they, they tend to, um, they tend to work that way. Um, but the, uh, but the ability to recognize them and understand them are completely related, which is why, um, I began selling my Beato bundle altogether. To me, it was like, you know, I can sell all these courses separately or I can sell them together because there's no sense in selling. Yes, there's music theory in my ear training course. There absolutely is. But there's no sense in separating the stuff and and making people pay more money for four separate courses or whatever. I just bundle them together. The price this uh, this week is 89 bucks. That's the lowest price I ever have it at. I, I've, I've done, I do it probably about four times a year, put it for that much. And um, <clears throat> I have a hope, I have a hope that someday, maybe some people, millions of people watch these videos. Okay, I've got whatever, 13, 1400 videos. And probably between this and Instagram and my second channel, my Beato 2 channel, I've had probably about 2 billion views, something like that. Maybe not quite 2 billion, but close to 2 billion. And maybe there's a few people that are, are inspired by this stuff and they get these courses and they learn this stuff and they put it to use and they write some really creative songs. And if only a few people do that, if only... A, Point zero 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 one percent of people do that. It's still a lot of people, and there's a lot of possibilities there. There, you know, we didn't have the internet when I was growing up. Uh, putting together, um, putting to, putting this stuff together was difficult back then. Dev says I got the be out of it. I'm surprised how well you explained everything. As if we're as if we're complete beginners, still having a hard time with augmented chords. Augmented chords are tough, Dev. They're tough to hear. Um, but I do, I just start from the beginning with everything and I, and I explain, um, I explain what these things are in the theory portion and then I explain how to hear them in the ear training portion. So if I have a C major, C, E, G, C, E, G sharp. Now, if it's Dylan, my son, and he hears that, he knows it's C, I, Augmented over D flat augmented. <laughs> um, that's the next level up. But uh, you know you can still you can even hear those kind of things, right? And this is um, the stuff. This is my life's work here. I'm I'm really blessed to to be able to come on YouTube and teach these concepts and not have to take any sponsors. Um, I basically may do ads for my, my courses and that's it. I take the money for my courses, I put it into the interviews. I say this every week, but it's the truth. Um, I, 
uh, I believe that music education is something that um, is vitally important for everyone. And it's something you can learn at any age. Uh, the discipline study of a music instrument is, is something that everyone should uh, embark on in their lifetime. It's like learning a second language, but I think it's even more important. Well, it is learning. It's, it's not like learning a second language. It is learning a second language. Okay, so I'm on here and, um, and I'm, I'd make these lessons. You know, yes, this stuff's in my book, but it doesn't, um, I can't present all the information because I have videos that go. My courses are video courses, just so people understand. Um, and then the ear training course is programming with it, right? So it keeps track of your best performances and things like that. But um, I just, you know, I hope that people get something out of this. That's really it. And the interviews, same thing. I'm trying to preserve the uh, first person accounts of the people that are the important musicians of, uh, of the past 60 years or so throughout my lifetime. I'm gonna be 62 years old in a couple of weeks. But um, somebody said, I haven't studied this stuff in years, but it's great review. That's what these things are. For people that know this stuff, this is a review. Um, some people are asking how Dylan's doing. Dylan's doing great. We were just hanging out. Probably go out and play some basketball together here. Um, anyhow, you guys are amazing. It's great to, uh, great to see everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And um, got some cool videos coming up. Some other interesting interviews on the way. So um, hope to see you guys soon. Take care. See ya.